Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, on the dais today, just to my far left, we have Coach Dave Durden. Dave is the men's head coach at Cal Berkeley, and he will also be this summer's U.S. men's swimming team coach in Tokyo. Um, and then next to me, I have Ryan Murphy, 2016 Olympian, and he's a current world record holder in the 100-meter backstroke and the reigning Olympic trials champion in the 100 and 200-meter backstroke. Um, and so just a little housekeeping, if you could, again, raise your hand, we'll get a mic over to you and sort of as loudly and clearly as you can through your masks to ask the question so the guests on the dais can hear you. That would be very appreciated. And so with that, we'll start with our first question, just down here in the front. Hey, Ryan, Nathan Fennell with the LA Times. How did the, uh, the year-long delay impact uh, your training approach, your mental approach, just your overall um, uh, build-up to the, uh, the games? Yeah, so I, I think the, the build-up to the games was, was interesting in, in the fact that there actually was a build-up in terms of what we were allowed to do at Cal. I think as, as the initial shutdown came down, we, we weren't able to swim at Cal. We had to find some other options. We had to find some other weight room slash dry land options. We eventually were able to get back into Cal with a small group. That group ended up kind of growing throughout the year until now where, where the whole team is able to swim together. So, so that, that was pretty, that, that's a pretty good symbol of the year is, is we kind of got back to, to close to normal by, by the end here. And in terms of like my, my physical mental approach, it's been great. I, I think this year has, has been about as good of a year of training as, as I've ever had. And, and I'm really, really excited to, to see how it all comes together out here. Hey, Dave, um, a general question, but is there anything to be learned as the head men's coach when one of your prospective Olympians stepped away from the trials feeling like, the pursuit of an Olympic medal was too much. Not just taking part, but, you know, it was gold medal or nothing, basically. Can you ask that question again? Sorry, I just want to make sure I, I heard you correctly. Um, is there something to be learned in a broader perspective as a coach, as a coaching staff, as an organization, when you have um, one of your 2016 Olympians step away, not because he doesn't enjoy competing or swimming anymore, but just this pursuit of Olympic medals or nothing has become burdensome? Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's absolutely something to be learned from that. Um, I think we're we're learning and have learned a, a lot in the past. Well, I don't I don't want to speak for others. I'll speak for me. I've learned a lot in the past year. I've learned a lot in the past four years, uh, going from from Rio to getting ready for Tokyo to getting ready for um, you know now 2021, getting ready for 2020, and then now for 2021. Um, you know, my my perspective is is one as a college coach, which I understand the balance of uh, intercollegiate athletics and uh, academic pursuits, which also includes professional uh, pursuits that go beyond the sport of swimming. And sometimes those professional goals do not involve swimming. Some of those professional life goals, um, as, as our guys get a little bit older, a little bit more wise, a, a, a little uh, more understanding that they, that they, uh, the, the sport that they have loved as a kid or even as a, as an adult, uh, their, their priorities have changed. And, and we appreciate that. We celebrate that. We want to make sure that we get them going in the right direction, uh, in life. So, uh, I, I've, I've learned that, um, I continue to learn that. And I know that over the next four years, I'll, or even three years, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to learn more about it. Hi, Ryan. Uh, this is Maggie Hendricks from Valley Sports. I'm wondering if over the past 15 months, if you had any moments, any doubts of this whole event now even happening? Yeah, oh, of course. I, I mean, I think that the, the main thing we've learned in, in the past year is that it's hard to plan very far in advance. I, I think that's something that, that I've always liked to do. I've always enjoyed doing that. And that's not something we've been able to do. And, and I think that's a that's a really valuable skill from this year is, is learning how to live day by day and being able to adjust day by day, depending on what our situation holds. Uh, 
Thank you. Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. Uh, Ryan, you guys have had just a great backstroke training group there. How much have you relished being part of that and having that daily competition? And then Dave, from your standpoint, what's it like watching him respond to that competition? I love it. I love it. I mean, I think uh, Dave has has a great knack for just getting really quality people in at Cal. And so it, it really is a joy to, to show up to the pool every day and, and swim against those those really awesome people and those very talented athletes. And they're all very unique in, in their own right. Uh, you know, going back to, to when I first started at Cal, Jacob Pebby was an incredible training partner. And, and then he, he moved on as his wife got into to med school in, in San Diego. And now we've got Daniel Carr, Bryce Mefford, Destin Lasco. I, it's just a, a really incredible group to, to be a part of. Each has their, their individual strengths that if, if we're doing an underwater set, I'm going to want to line up next to Destin Lasco. He's got incredible underwaters. If we're going a little bit longer backstroke, probably line up next to Bryce Mefford. Daniel Carr can, can beat me nine times out of 10 if we're just jump starting to 15. So, so everyone's got their, their little skills, and it's just really fun to, to, to keep each other on our toes every single day. Yeah, you know, Pat, I think with this group specifically, I mean, it's, it's, um, you know, I don't want to sound cliche, but it is a really fun group to work with just because of the personalities that we have in the group. And that, that, that brings a dynamic to what we're doing where it, it just is, I, I thoroughly enjoy coming down to the, to the pool deck and, and working with, with these backstrokers. Destin Lasko is probably the nicest guy you're ever going to meet. I mean, Truth be told, he was up there in, in COVID testing for about three and a half hours today. And uh, he came out and was smiling. It was like, it was great. It was a wonderful experience. You, you know, so <laughs> like that's the type of kid that he is. And so that and that's a, a little bit of a manifestation of that group. I mean, it's they they really enjoy spending time with each other. They really enjoy competing against each other. And I think when you have a when you have a dynamic like that, it, it doesn't always happen that way. So when you have a di- dynamic like that as a coach, I try not to overanalyze it and just enjoy it for what it is and, and, and really help those guys accomplish their goals and swim fast. Hi, Megan Soison from NBC. This question's for Coach Durden. Um, as the men's coach for Tokyo, what are you looking for this week? Um, from the performers, especially as it relates to knowing the selection process you'll need to do for the relays um, and how tough international competition is, especially in the medley relay that the U.S. hasn't lost ever at the Olympics. Sure. When you First, when you say Coach Durden, I, I look for my wife because she's coaching Moraga Country Club. And that is like that's they're going to have their world championships at the end of this summer. And that's a really big deal. So uh, when you say Coach Durden, I start looking for Kathy behind me. Um, but really what I'm looking for in this week is trying to stay in the day to day. It's really tough and wearing and wearing two hats, being the head men's coach and and also being the, the head coach of our athletes that are looking at this eight day meet. So I'm, I'm, I'm really trying not to, to let myself get too far ahead and thinking about relay, relay, uh, selection, medley, relay, et cetera. Um, and, and I have to be careful with that. I mean, even as we get to the first night of this meet and, and we have, and, and we have men that make the U S Olympic team, uh, as much as, as I am, you know, fired up for them and looking forward to Tokyo, I've got to keep those guys that make the Olympic team, with their head in the next seven days of this thing, right? And because there are guys that are going to be racing on day one and day four and day six. And so just kind of keeping them moving in the right direction through this. So, you, you know, I am a, I am a minute to minute, hour to hour, and not really trying to get too, too far ahead. I was late for this thing, right? So uh, I'm trying to just to keep it, uh, keep it going in a minute to minute fashion uh, with this group. And as we get through it, then we'll start thinking about relays and start thinking about our competition and start thinking about how we can meld this group together uh, heading into Tokyo. I, w- I wasn't going to out Dave, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. And this is a question for either of you, but um, primarily you, Dave. Um, obviously, with California going into lockdown, your training was probably a little bit more disrupted than most um, last spring. But then that continued into the, you know, summer, fall, winter with lack of meats and whatnot. And, you know, how hard was it to balance some of the pros that you have training who were not getting the same amount of racing opportunities when you have a college group that is getting a lot more reps at that? And, you know, how do you 
measure how people are doing when there's just maybe a few less data points than in a normal Olympic year run up? Yeah, it, it was hard. Uh, I mean, that's kind of the short answer to that. And I appreciate you calling me Dave instead of coach Durden as awesome. Uh, no, I, um, <laughs> um, but, um, it, yeah, it was, it was a challenge. One of the fortunate things for a lot of our professional athletes is they did have some recent opportunities in Europe to get to. So I was over there for 10 days, uh, just seeing the setup of that as that went from October through November, uh, which was great. And then as we got into January, we, we did start to have, uh, some of our pro series meets in, in January and March and April, and that helped us out, uh, to, to really see, um, you know, kind of where our athletes were at little, you know, kind of points and times. The, the tough thing to do as a coach is you want this to be as normal as possible. And everything we've done this past year really hasn't been normal. And that's okay. I mean, it's, um, I think as a, as a coach, you can get lulled into sleep. It's like, well, this is what we've always done. And I, and I, hate, uh, I hate doing that. Sometimes it can get a little boring. So I, I like the challenge of, uh, you know, kind of being without a locker room for a year. You know, and, and having our guys uh, change outside and be, uh, you, you know, and just be thoughtful about uh, swimming in a 50 meter pool and starting from other ends and what we had to do uh, through that piece. Um, it's not normal or let me say it is normal for us to have some training interruptions in California. We've, uh, you know, we've we've had some uh, some unfor uh, unfortunate events, uh, whether it be wildfires or or whatnot that has kept us out of the pool for different reasons. And, and so we we've, we've been adaptable through things and, and, and our guys understand that and they get that they're, they're a pretty resilient uh, bunch in that regard. Question for Ryan, how do you keep your swims good, bad, or indifferent from defining you as a person? I mean, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and I, and I think the hardest thing is that is that I really, I really do care. I, I really care about the outcome of, of every single swim. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's mostly as a result of, of just realizing how much work I've put into it, but also knowing how much work Dave's put into it, Chase, Roman, my, my support system, my brother sitting in the back over there. So it's like, there's so many people that, that impact the performance. And, and so you, you, wanna, you wanna honor them every, every time you step up to the box. But I think at the end of the day, like I have, I have so many things that I'm excited about outside of the pool. Uh, you know, whether that be my my career after swimming or whatever, whatever it is after after swimming, I'm, I'm really excited for for that. And so I think as a result of having, I guess, a, a well-rounded bunch of interests, I think that helps me from from really being defined by the sport. Anna Bellinghausen with UNO TV. Ryan, given the absence of competitions, fans, crowd, and all of that, do you think this one will mean a little bit more in Omaha given the absence in the lull of swimming? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it'll, it'll be fun to, to have some, some fans in the crowd. I, I absolutely love that part of the sport. Uh, it, it really does add, add a level of adrenaline behind the blocks and and it, and it makes us feel like we're, we're doing something really cool when, when people are, are cheering, when they're invested. Uh, so, so I cannot wait to, to have some fans in the crowd and, and hopefully they're going to be cheering really loud. Great. Any final questions? Okay. Question for Dave. What do you think is the biggest difference the year delay has made? Does it? Do you think it will impact the older veteran swimmers more or the younger swimmers more? What should we? What do you think is the likely trend that the year delay made? Yeah, um, I don't know if it's necessarily a trend because I think it affects everybody. Right? It, it's uh, for some of the younger swimmers, it's given them a, a year uh, to. Uh, to, 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 to get a little bit better. And when, it, when I say younger swimmers on the men's side, I'm, I'm looking at, you, you know, kind of our uh, national junior team group from 2019, having, a, having an extra year. So, you know, ultimately two more years to, to kind of get themselves in a spot to really impact this team, which is good. Um, in terms of the, in terms of the, uh, of our veteran swimmers, um, you, you know, I, I think of our veteran most swimmer uh, on, on our side and Nathan, this extra year has helped him. 
uh, you know, just further removed from uh, from cancer, further removed uh, from uh, battling that, um, uh, you know, further into his life as a husband, as a father, uh, which gives you proper uh, perspective on things. I mean, all those things are really, really good things. So, I see it. Uh, I see it uh, affecting every. You know, again, I'm a glass half full sort of guy. So I, I see it affecting everybody in a, in a in a positive way as we've moved through. It, it, and I say that from the perspective of my group. Like I've seen it uh, affect everybody in a positive way with the guys that have been training uh, in Berkeley over this past uh, uh, year and a half now. And just because you've coached Tony, can you um, wrap your head around the fact that he's competing here at 40? What do you make of that? And how is he able to do that after everything he's been through and that he's put his body through? Yeah, Anthony is awesome. Uh, I mean, I, I, I love that guy. He has uh, uh, taught me um, about uh, human potential. And, um, uh, and, and he's done so in, in, in a lot more eloquently than I just put it. Uh, he has, um, uh, you know, every now and then I, I get a text from, from Anthony and it's, uh, it, it's always, it's always good, uh, to have conversation with, uh, with Anthony. So I'm, I'm excited to see him race. Uh, I mean, I, I hope the smile on my face says that. I mean, it's, I'm really excited to see, uh, to see him, uh, get up and, and compete against this group.